Okay, so we disagree a little bit about Hawkeye. I yeah. probably brought you down with my Miss Marvel take because I'm such a downy downer. But we well, both can agree. I'm at a disadvantage because I was never a fan. Well, so no it's fan, like, there's no one I'll to be a fan of. She didn't it. exist. She didn't huh? exist until she didn't exist until like a few years ago. Oh yeah, Mar- see that. The Miss Marvel we knew didn't ex- is is Captain Marvel now. That's Carol. Yeah, Dan. that's what I thought. But you know, they who might did a little swap. We'll yeah, on. I didn't, you know, so like I wasn't really familiar with this iteration of it. And, um, you know, I'll probably watch it just to watch it so we can sit here and chat about it, you know. Um, but like I said, the next one that I'm really looking forward to is She-Hulk. I really am, am curious to see how that pans out. Yeah, my fear is uh, She-Hulk's appeal for me was that she was witty and funny and her her power it manifests to give her confidence. Like she comes out right. of her shell to, as She-Hulk. It seems very counterintuitive to the current narrative of feminism and, and strong women and all that. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm watching them even if I'm bashing them. I don't know what to tell people. Um, you know, it's what it is. But we can both agree that 2021 and to date, victory is still in the hands of one, two, three Peter Parkers. Spider-Man, yes. No Way Home. Movie oh, of the year. Absolutely. Movie of the absolutely. year. I say movie of the year because, and I told, I talked to my dad today about this. It may not even critically be the best. Like King Richard probably is the best movie from a critic standpoint. But I can rewatch Spider-Man over and over and over again and still be entertained. And I can't uh, take anything away from a film that made over one and a half billion dollars Post pandemic, congrats yeah, to Spidey and Marvel, and most importantly, congrats to Sony. It now has made more money than the other three Marvel movies: Black Widow, Shang Chi, and Eternals combined. Yeah, yeah, I believe it. I believe it t- totally because uh, you know Black Widow was not that great. Uh, yes, Eternals, I didn't even see it, but I I, I can feel you groaning inside. Just uh, put, as dude. As I, I have never. Word, I have never. I mean, you know how much I do. I work around the clock doing all these yeah. crazy things I do, right? I've never nodded off in a Marvel movie. I've nodded off in movies. Never nodded off. I nodded off about 20 minutes in or so. I just kind of... Yeah. I'm falling asleep in a Marvel movie? Like, it was about well, 20, three, 25 minutes. Shang-Chi was my favorite of those three. Uh, yeah, that bar's pretty low, though, but I will agree. I will yeah. give you that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but now Spider-Man... <clears throat> Excuse me, Spider Man was just. I should have got you a Katie action figure for Christmas. Lord knows they were oh, giving you them go. away at the local toy yeah. store. With a uh, bowl of mac and cheese. Yes. Uh, what is um, what is your favorite part besides the portal scenes? Besides the portal scene where they all come yeah, through. Where they all come through the portal. I mean, that's like. Uh, my favorite scene. Oh God. Um. Honestly, probably when Spider-Man catches MJ. Oh, that was good. That's one of the two. That's one of my. That two, was yeah. a great was one. So emotionally heart wrenching. That yeah. and also when they were all questioning each other's spider. Uh, oh, okay. Web shooters. Oh, I was gonna say it's it's uh, yeah Andrew Garfield Spider-Man saves MJ Zendaya, and your your heart just turns inside out, especially as a comic book fan because you know what the death of Gwen Stacy means yeah. in the comic books. Even though that didn't really play out well in the movie, you know what it did. But his scene earlier where he's talking about how dark it made him and all that, great scene. Uh, Wait, I lied. Okay, I lied. let's see if it's the one. My second favorite scene was at the table when the brick came through the window oh, and yeah. Matt Murdock catches it near there. Yeah. And Peter Parker looks at him and says, how did you do that? He goes, I'm a really good lawyer. Really good lawyer. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, my favorite part, I, I, the Zendaya scene's like a special scene. My favorite part was there's a shot at the end where they're all three swinging, and they all three swing right, but then they all land differently in different poses. But each of their swinging styles and how they land are all different iterations of Spider-Man through the years. It right. Yeah. Beautiful. And you watch it a second or third time whenever you get a chance to watch it on video or whatever. Watch how they swing, where their arms and legs go, and then watch how they land. It it hits you in the feels as a Spider Man fan, man. It well, was it does. And the so other thing cool. is, the other thing is, you know, you kind of, 
because all the Spider-Man movies were spaced so far apart. Yes. You kind of lose that feeling for each one when the next one comes. But now when you see all three of them there, I kind of was like, all right, well, each one in their own was really good. You know, the even actors though... actors the movies. Uh, the actors or the movies? Uh, yes and no. I'm yeah, going to say I actors, so because, not so much Like the, the first one, Tobey Maguire, you know, that's really all we had then. And there was nothing else like it at that time when it came out. Because of just the, the yeah. graphics and everything, it was just, you know, Great. for that time period, it was cutting edge. So we loved it. Yeah. You know, uh, even though Tobey Maguire, I wasn't my first choice, but he didn't do a bad job. But then Andrew Garfield, I loved Andrew Garfield's version of him. Oh, OK. But the storyline, some of them were a little, yeah, they're you know, I think they could have been a little better. Yeah, I, um, I have to admit, because with Spider-Man, obviously, everybody's blown away. And it was a great iteration. There's some great imagery. Um, Spider-Man 2 was next level. I didn't care for his mask coming off in the subway scene. Because other than that, that movie is almost perfect. If his mask had stayed on, there's too many adults that would recognize him or be to identify him as Peter Parker. Um, that part I didn't like. But other than that shot where he takes his mask off, the movie's nearly flawless. It's like a perfect superhero movie. And it really is like top five of all time until this massive Marvel universe expanded and blew up into superhero, you know, the plethora of right. them and Dark Knight and stuff like that. Um Obviously, the the Venom miscasting and mischaracterization uh, uh, overshadows that the Sandman storyline, which is I'm glad they kept Sandman and not yeah. trying to squeeze the other version of Venom in this universe because the Sandman yeah. character is actually handled reasonably well and seemed better. Um, the Garfield, he wasn't the problem. Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy was never the problem. The fact that the director felt like he was doing episodes of Buffy and not Spider-Man was my problem. Like these, right. these were these these terrible, bland romance type stories for, you know, massive amounts of screen time where nothing of any significance happened to Spider-Man. And then the weird thing about the arc with the parents, the dead parents and finding the stuff and all that, it's just right. way too much distraction of nonsense. This just showed how great Andrew Garfield is as, as a Peter Parker. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If we had to rank this movie, it ranks pretty close to that top tier with Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. They're, those three now are in a class kind of by themselves. Yeah. And then for me, and I was, Go ahead. I was happy to see that Tom Holland signed on for three more. Yeah, and there's so much money involved. There's no chance they're going to let this guy walk. They can pay him. And he's just perfect as it, I think. I mean, I liked Andrew Garfield. Probably he's my second favorite Spider-Man. Um, Tom Holland is definitely my favorite. See, I thought... Toby's nerdiness really sold me as Peter. It was the age thing, but they transitioned to college so quickly. I bought it. And I will say that only because of how um, No Way Home ends, it saves the Tom Holland era for me. Because up until now, I would complain he's not Peter Parker. Like he's a kid playing Peter Parker. He's Spider Boy. He's Iron Boy. He's not Peter Parker yet. But they ended in a way that makes him Peter Parker. Like I'm okay with this being like the early years before he right. really becomes the, the comic book character that we know and love. It's perfectly clean slate. His identity is clean. He creates the new cheesy suit, which is fantastic. Yeah, I'm good. I, it's, I'm fantastic. And now he knows that he has to be alone so that nobody gets hurt. Or there's consequences. So here's right. my here's my thing. Let's do a quick fan fiction. I wish we were writing the screenplay. If I had to make my pitch to you, Rob, you're my executive producer. Here's what I want to write, Rob. Uh, we're going to pick up Spider-Man. He's going to have a new year one, obviously, because he's going to be rebooted back into this universe. Um, he's uh, he's 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 going he's, going, uh, he's taking the, the obviously the GED. No one knows who he is, but he's applying to college. He's going to get into college, and he meets this uh, new girl and falls for her. And her name is Mary Jane, and she goes by MJ sometimes. And right. it's not Zendaya. She's recast as a completely different girl. But because of the MJ thing, he feels like it's divine intervention. And, uh, you know, and maybe there creates some uh, some uh, emotional conflict some point in the end of episode, end of movie one or movie two, where he sees a Zendaya character or something like that. Right. I don't know. Maybe um, I would like to see. I don't need to rehash a whole bunch of Spider-Man origin stuff because so, the Aunt May stuff's going to haunt him now. They, they've kind of gender swapped that thing. I would like sure. to open my movie with a montage of him catching criminals. So we have this massive 
rogue gallery of Spider-Man villains. I would love to see an opening credit sequence that's kind of complicated, but having him, he's quickly capturing Vulture again, Shocker again, you know, doing this one and th this one and this one and hitting three or four of these villains and kind of set up, obviously, a Sinister Six and or the Venom introduction. I don't know if I want to well, do that at the beginning of my yeah. trilogy or if I want to do that in the middle of my trilogy. I don't know where I want to Right. Do. So now we also have to address the uh, the white, the symbiote in the room. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, the that, that, little that little piece of, uh, that little yeah. piece was left. Sorry yeah, about piece, the noise. No, a piece of a, a piece of the symbiote is left behind in our MCU. So we've got it. So it's going to, it's got to get on Spider-Man at some point or another. Well, I would like to actually thing... see it happen sooner. And then have his right. movie like a Secret War set it up so well in the '80s. I have not read the newer Secret War, so I don't know if there's stuff there too or not. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're at. So yeah, Spidey wins okay. 2020. And the last programming of the symbiote before he broke up was has to get to New York to see Spider-Man. Yeah. So uh... yeah, no, there were some decent parts there. I didn't dislike any of the credit scene. I didn't really dislike. Uh, the, this, the only stuff I disliked in this movie, No Way Home, it all centers around Doctor Strange. Like the irresponsibility of performing the spell and the wording and trying to crack jokes about Scooby-Doo and all that early part of Doctor Strange, all of that is what I had a problem with. Nothing right. else. I, I like, when he came back at the end, that was all fine. It was very emotional at the end. I liked all that. Uh, obviously, this movie, I mean, we could go on and on about Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin is like Hall oh, of Fame. Yeah. He's become That's a goat. Cool. He's become a goat now. We're talking like Heath Ledger, Joker, kind of great. This was incredible. The writer yeah. and the producers did a great job of incorporating that classic Goblin look by using the sweatshirt that got all tattered and stuff. That was brilliant. Yeah, yeah it was and great. Was the the awesome. characters were great. You know, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed the, uh, the villains. Um, Doc Ock, it was great seeing him back there. And, so uh, you know... I like the three kids looking at him and said, exactly, what is your name again? And he's oh, yeah, like, you like that joke? You know, yeah, joking about it. It was just like, it was good. I, I, I enjoyed I, it I more. There's nothing bad really I could say about the show other than, you know, my, the one thing I didn't like was the post credit scene with, with Venom. I know it had to be, but I just didn't care for it. Yeah, I mean, I what I hated more was just the Doctor Strange trailer because I felt like I was watching like crappy Disney Marvel after seeing a good Sony Marvel movie because I felt like right. I was let down like you. And that's where I saw America Chavez show up because she's a portal opener or whatever. And I'm like, oh, crap. I guess it is for legit. She's actually going to be in this movie in a significant way because it was Strange and Scarlet Witch and her in that one shot where they're looking at the multiverse. I'm like, well, I guess she's not some insignificant character that might make a little intro. Nope, she's going to be part of the plot. So, right. Oh. She is, it's unbearable listening to uh, yeah. uh, the dialogue they write for this character in these comic books. So, um, all right. Well, that kind of catches us up on Marvel land. We didn't, we don't have a single DC thing that we mentioned in this thing. It may be by coincidence, but do you watch any of the CD, CW product or anything like that at all? I've been I so checked yet. out from all of it for so Yeah, long. I've been pretty checked out. I didn't, I liked, like we had talked about before, I liked the, uh, the new, um, CW, the what was it, Superman and Lois or something like that? It's really good, yes. I didn't see the latest uh, the latest season though, so that I really got to buckle down because I, I was uh, caught up. I don't out. know if it's if it's we're if we're into it, we're not into it very much. Let me see. Right. I'll open it while I'm, while I'm talking. You see, yeah, the season one was great. Season one's. I will say this: if you if you're not really into comic books or Superman, it may not. You may be like, oh, it's not as good as you, these guys said it was. That's why. It is a little, like it. it's a little placating to us fans a little bit, but it is yeah. really good. The family drama, it's all very believable stuff. The kids are fantastic. The cast yeah. is great. The performances are good. Yeah. Really I enjoyed it. I'm caught up up until the, this new season. I didn't watch any of the newest season, uh, but the rest of it I'm caught up on and I, I really enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. Yeah, I agree with that. I never watched a minute of any of the, uh, Batwoman, other than this really horrible edit that I, I don't know if I showed you. I watched, I watched one episode and I couldn't watch another. It's unbearably bad. It's so yeah, unbearably it changed from all of the source material. Like it's just, I don't know why you're calling it what, yeah, there's no season two on the, on the HBO Max yet. I didn't know if it dropped yet or not. Um, okay. 
because the Batwoman, they did the same thing with like Birds of Prey. They changed every single character so radically much from the what they are. I, I don't understand like why they're using their names. You didn't watch Birds of Prey? I did. I didn't like it at all. Terrible. Yeah, Absolutely. No, terrible. I didn't like it. Yeah. Just like the new Suicide Squad. I watched that. I didn't care for that either. You didn't like the Suicide Squad? I like the new one. The newest, not the new one. The first one or the new one? The first one I liked. You didn't like the the new one with James James Gunn did? I didn't care for it that much, no. With the Peacemaker and stuff? Yeah. Oh. I didn't. Now, he, they got did a spinoff of Peacemaker. I'm, I'm going to start watching just yeah, to I see. I haven't watched that because, yet. But, yeah. Uh, I liked the character, but I didn't care for the movie overall. Uh, I think what I liked about the movie is I felt like I was actually in a comic book. There were so yeah. many comic booky elements, and it felt like a traditional um, Ostrander Suicide Squad comic book. I didn't read very much Suicide Squad, but he overlapped yeah. a lot with Batman, and Maybe that's I what I read. And they were kind of like that. They were kind of like, "Well, we're all gonna die anyway," and they right. amongst. They were they were just they'd just as easily kill each other than they would go on their little mission. It was really always just you know. That's why I was always shocked by the movie adaptation. Like, how am I supposed to take this yeah. stuff seriously? They weren't that yeah. serious in the comic book.